Well, hello, friends. Bringing greetings on this beautiful day and praise God for the gift of this day and for our time together. If you have your Bible with you this day, um, we're going to be in the 26th chapter of the Gospel of Matthew. And we're going to pick up on a story that we started a couple days ago. It's about Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. It's the place where Jesus said, Father, if this cup can be taken from me, then I pray that you would lift it from me. But ultimately, not, not my will, but your will. There's another significant piece on prayer that happens just after that. And if we look at chapter 26 and verse 40, we hear these words. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. So you remember they were with him. He took Peter, James, and John on a little further, and then Jesus went and, and he prayed. He said he was to return to his disciples. He found them sleeping. He says, couldn't you men keep watch with me for one hour? He asked this of Peter. Couldn't you keep watch for one hour? Keep watch. In other words, stay and pray. He says, watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Pray that you will not fall into temptation. So, so sometimes we see that there could be temptation in our future. Almost always there is temptation that potentially can cross our path. And Jesus urges us to be a people of prayer, that we, that we watch and pray about the temptation that we are going to face. And then he makes this statement. He says, the spirit is willing, the flesh is weak. I think we can all relate to that. In, inside ourselves, in our spirit, we, we have this hunger to pray, to be in communication with God, to share our praises and our thanksgivings and our blessings to share our struggles and our trials and our need for God's help and, and God's healing and God's forgiveness. And, and the, we, we have all of this that in our spirit, we hunger to have that kind of a prayer life where we're bringing all of it before God and we're in this constant you know, communication relationship of prayer. He says, but the flesh is weak. What does that mean? The flesh is weak. Well, here it shows that they were tired. They fell asleep. Their eyes were heavy. In fact, we'll find it in the next verse. It says, uh, he went away a second time and he prayed, my father, if it is possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it, but may your will be done. And when he came back again, he found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. And so he left them and went away once more and prayed a third time, the same thing. So this should give us an element that praying the same prayer is not something that God looks down upon, but it's how God strengthens and shapes us and prepares us. But I want to look more deeply at the disciples who their, their eyes are heavy, they're tired, they're exhausted. So the flesh is weak. And even though in their spirit they want to pray, they want to lean into God, the, 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 the fatigue has overcome them. Well, it's not always fatigue. Our flesh is weak because, you know, yes, sometimes we get tired, but other times uh, our flesh is weak because it leads us toward all of the distractions we, I think, struggle with the distraction of busyness in our world. It has us running so hard that so often we don't make time for communication with God on a regular basis. We don't take time for the, the relationship to grow. And when we don't take time for that, it has no place in which it can grow. And so we come and we do our, our official prayers at our official times, and then we wonder why we don't feel close to God. Feelings can be deceptive, but there's an element that how can we expect to, to have a sense of closeness with God, to have that internal sense, that internal knowing, if we aren't spending time there, if we don't treasure and enjoy it, if all of the worries of the world are our first focus. And so friends, I, I, I urge all of us, I urge every one of us, myself included, that we would begin to look at what is most important in our life, what do we carve out time for? What do we make space for in every day? Is space for our relationship with God part of our day? Is it not just one little part where we carve out 10 minutes? Is it more? Is, is God, if somebody looked at our day, is God the most important relationship we have? Is prayer the most important activity that we do? Are we finding our lives fed by that prayer? 
the flesh is going to fight hard. And if the flesh doesn't fight hard enough, Satan wants to sit there and entice the flesh, that we would lean into that flesh, that we would lean into our worldliness, that we would lean into the, the, the busyness and the things of this world and draw away from God. Let us learn a lesson from Jesus' interaction with the disciples that it takes tremendous effort to battle against the leanings of the flesh. But we must. We must listen to the guiding of the Holy Spirit. We must listen to that draw to prayer that we may be in communion and fellowship with Almighty God. What a treasure that our God invites us into such a relationship. Friends, it's been great being with you today. I pray as always you know that God loves you, and so do I.